Welcome everyone to another episode of Wolf Street. For those of you that don't know, my name is Wolf, and for those of you that do, thanks for checking me out again. As always, you can check me out on all social media platforms at Every Time I Cash, or you could reach out to me directly on my website, everytimeicash.com slash contact. This video and all content is intended for informational and educational purposes only and is not to be substituted as financial advice. If you're looking for financial advice, please seek the help of a financial professional or reach out to a financial advisor who could help put together a plan that best suits your needs. This video is going to be a quick primer for the earnings week ending July 30th, 2021. We have the big six reporting earnings this week, along with a list of other S&P 500 names that report as well. I'm going to cover the big six being Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Tesla. And I'm going to cover a couple of other names that I find important this week. So I'm not going to take up too much of your time here. I'm just going to jump right into it. On your screen, you're going to see the S&P 500. This has been the trend in the S&P 500 for the better part of this year. Essentially, we've been in this rising channel. Um, we've gone back and tested the 50 day or undercut the 50 day now five times this year. Every test, excuse me, one, two, three. Uh, we've gone back and tested it. Sorry, I don't know why the on my screen there isn't enough arrows, but essentially we've gone back and tested it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times this year, excuse me. And every time that we've tested the 50 day, we found ourselves riding back higher and creating new all time highs. This most recently happened last week. We, we went back and tested that 50 day bottom of the channel. We undercut the, uh, the 50 day, we found support, and then we rallied to a new high. Now, since April, we found ourselves pressed up against this resistance line. And currently we find ourselves pressed up against it again. Now, like I said, every time since April, we've found ourselves pressing up against this resistance level. We go back and test the 50 day. Every test of the 50 day has been met with support. And then we create a new all time high in due time. Um, currently we're pressed up against it again, and we'll see if this time is the outlier where we bust through, or if this time is no different like last time. Now it's important to note that there have been only five other times that the big five names have reported in the same week. Those big five are, uh, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, which is Google, Facebook, and Microsoft in all five of those times, we've not seen any meaningful higher results, like collectively in the market. Uh, four of those times have resulted in downturns. One of those times, which was the last time these companies reported earnings, resulted in a flat market. So these are some things that are going to be important to consider going into this week. These are some things that I am considering and, and just kind of knowing the scope of uh, where things are at going into this week and these are the things that i'm going to hopefully see change going into this week so it'd be really nice to see a push through and then go retest the upper side of this um range that we've been this channel that we've been in uh now i'm not saying this is going to happen quickly i'm not saying it's going to happen in a day a week whatever but it'd be really nice to see a change where these companies report and there is some upside surprise but we'll see what happens. Now, um, staying with the program, we got Tesla is the first of these big six reporting today. Tesla reports after the market closes today. There's an, uh, a consensus estimate of 98 cents a share and the revenue consensus of 11.4 billion for this quarter. Now, Tesla is unique because Tesla doesn't usually, investors for Tesla don't usually care one way or the other if Tesla, um, actually beats the numbers um, in general. Now, a beat is really good for them, but in general, investors in Tesla kind of pass it off and say that they're in hyper growth. The thing that is important to watch for in Tesla is any guidance on deliveries, any input on chip shortages. Now, there's a global chip shortage, especially um, uh, prevalent in the uh, auto manufacturing sector, and Tesla last quarter was not burdened with this. They did mention that they had to go out and buy um, USBs from Best Buy, 
who knows if that's true or not, but they did go out and say that, but by and large, they weren't materially affected by some of these shortages like other companies were. So it'll be interesting to see if there is any material um, uh, weakness there or any material headwinds there for the company. Uh, outside of that, Tesla, it's important to know any sort of uh, manufacturing updates on any plants, Cybertruck in, uh, info, and any any developments out of China, out of Texas, Austin, or out of um, Germany in particular. Outside of that, uh, Tesla is unique because of their Bitcoin exposure. Last quarter, they announced that they sold some of their Bitcoin for a profit. Uh, and Tesla is also unique because of their carbon credits, which is just basically free profit for the company. And they've been a beneficiary of that in the last several years. And that's kind of unwinding today. Now, from a technical perspective, uh, ultimately, Tesla has been getting defended recently up against its 50 day. I'm highlighting that with a pink arrow on the screen. Uh, it's kind of consolidating here above all of its moving averages. It's been stuck in a rut for, you know, the better part of 2021, uh, ever since uh, their inclusion into the S&P. And ultimately, um, they're battling it out with finding support against its 50 day, which I'm highlighting here again and uh, finding some sort of resistance from trapped uh, bulls, I assume. Now, outside of that, if you just uh, zoom out on Tesla on a weekly scale, um, let's see, we go to the weekly. Uh, Tesla has a rising 50 day, or excuse me, 50 week, which is just a one year average price essentially coming up acting as support. So it'll be really interesting this quarter if they don't say anything really materially weak if there is no real fundamental structural headwinds that they see the stock should ultimately resolve higher in the next couple of weeks um assuming that there isn't anything materially weak coming out of this quarter like i said on the front end investors typically give this stock a pass uh they are bought in for the long haul they're bought they're bought in for the story and not so much bought in on a quarter to quarter uh, basis. Now, moving along, we have Apple. Apple is the biggest company of the bunch, the biggest company on earth. It's basically the market. They report July 27th, which is tomorrow after the market closes. They have an EPS consensus, excuse me, consensus of a dollar and one, and they have a revenue consensus of 73.44 billion which is just a monster number when you put it in perspective. Now, if you just look at things technically on Apple, Apple recently broke out of a one-year range. It's basically gone nowhere for the better part of a year. It just recently broke out of its all-time high. Um, I'm going to zoom in on an hourly basis just to kind of give a little more perspective. Um, Tesla, or excuse me, Apple uh, created an all-time high here on the 15th of July. It's been trending lower since, and then today, it pushed through that downtrend, but it hasn't really found any substantial buyers on this breakout today. Um, 150 seems to be a barrier on Apple. Uh, should it break out above that 150 level, I assume that buyers will step in if they haven't already. Apple's the most widely owned uh, company on earth. It's in the most ETFs. It's a real sentiment gauge for the overall market. And essentially it is the market. Now I said in the previous uh, section that uh, Tesla is going to be a unique barometer for chips. Apple is too. If Apple has any supply issues, those are going to trickle down to the rest of the market pretty substantially. If they have any weak guidance, chip manufacturers and supply chain um, should see some sort of weakness across the board. So it'll be really interesting to see also, there's a refresh cycle coming up, typically comes out during September, so it'll be really in interesting to see if there's any guidance there. And then it'll be interesting to see if this uh, M1 chip push in their uh, computers lately has given any new um, margin expansion across the board for them. So those are all really important things that I'm watching on Apple. Moving along, we have Facebook. Facebook's the largest social media platform on earth outside of YouTube. 
and Google, if you want to call Google that, but Google is not really a social platform. They just have a couple. But Facebook is the largest social media company on earth. They're expected to report uh, July 28th after the market closes. The S&P 500 consensus is $3.03 a share. And then the revenue consensus of $27.87 billion. Uh, Facebook is interesting because they are a barometer on small businesses. Most small businesses advertise with Facebook, so it's really interesting to see uh, whether or not their strength in that market persists or if there's any sort of slowdown. The benefit that Facebook has currently going into the print is that Twitter and um, Snapchat already reported, so people kind of already have a barometer of what to expect. And as you can see on your screen, uh, Facebook broke out to all time highs last all time highs last week on the back of Twitter and Snapchat. So it's going to be really interesting to see how Facebook performs and whether or not they continue to assert their dominance in the space or whether or not they're slowing down and um, people have to adapt to that that sort of uh, slowdown. It also be interesting to see if Facebook's been able to monetize any of the the other platforms that they are involved with and that they own. Um, Oculus is down the pipeline. I think it's still a ways away. Uh, WhatsApp is another one, and it'll also be interesting. To, again, it'll also be interesting to see whether or not their small business advertising and just business advertising across the board is uh, still strong. Now, the next one is Amazon. Amazon is the most interesting one that I'm looking at in this earnings uh, season. They report the 29th, so they get the benefit of the doubt reporting last. So if, uh, well, it's a double-edged sword, right? So if they're exp if the other companies crush it and Amazon doesn't, then they're set up for a disaster. If the other companies don't crush it, then people will probably set up the expectations as, well, we don't really have to uh, hold, behold an Amazon to anything greater than what, what other companies have uh, reported. So the S&P consensus on Amazon is $12.19 a share, and then the revenue consensus is a huge number, $114.98 billion. If we just look at tech technicals on Amazon, it's about as pretty as it gets, right? So Amazon consolidated for a year. It went nowhere and it went sideways for a year. It, it was between that 3550 and that uh, 2900 call it level for the better part of a year. And then recently it broke out to all time highs, went back and retested those all time highs on the back of that market sell off that we got and now is pressing back towards those all time highs again. Amazon is unique for several reasons. Uh, this is going to be a quarter without Jeff Bezos as the CEO. Uh, they are recently devoting more uh, resources to AWS and kind of shifting their business mix. Um, and then Amazon also is the only one of these companies uh, that is not growing on financial engineering of any kind, right? So Amazon doesn't have any buybacks. It hasn't split. hasn't done any of that stuff. So it'll be interesting to see. There's a lot of uh, rumors every time around this time saying that Amazon might split. Should that be the case, it could really give the, co the company a tailwind. There were, there were rumors this morning about whether or not they are going to accept or adopt Bitcoin. That's another one that'll be interesting to hear if they even mention it. I doubt they do, but these are just some things to mention. Then the other thing is just to see uh, how the consumer's behaving. Last week, we got a couple of consumer names report and they crushed it. It'll be interesting to see if Amazon can give any further insights on those sorts of behaviors and if they could uh, kind of expand on whether or not the consumer still has a, a strong demand and are still shopping like they used to. So this is my favorite one across the board. It's the one I'm watching the most just because of the potential. It's a te purely technical, not, not talking about fundamentals necessarily, just from a purely technical perspective. I think it has uh, escape velocity potential if it really takes off. Now, the next one I want to pay attention to is Google. Excuse me. Google is, or Alphabet uh, will report the 27th aftermarket close. That's tomorrow. Again, they report 
the same day as uh, Apple. The consensus is 1915 a share, and then 56.05 billion um, for revenue. Now, Google is, for on a personal note, is my largest holding. Um, it's just I've owned it for forever. I continue to own it. I love the name. It's uh, slow and steady. Ever since it broke out of this this um, uptrend triangle that it was in, it's been riding this uptrend as well. Um, it's kind of similar to what I showed on the front end with the S&P. It's been riding this trend, and it's been banging up against resistance, comes back down, rides the trend, goes bangs up against resistance, comes back down, etc. Uh, it's been consolidating, and it recently broke out to all-time highs, and you know it could get another 5% potentially. Who knows? Obviously, anything can happen in earnings season. They can come out and say something no one expects, but generally, uh, with Ruth Porat at the helm, this company has been slow and steady. It's been a great operator, and it's been my favorite uh, hold. And this is just like a a hold. It's not a trade for me. It's my my, my largest holding, and I love the name. Um, some things that I'm watching for is if and when they will ever a either spin out YouTube or break down some of the metrics on YouTube and really push some more resources to monetize it. So those um, that's my that's the one thing that I would love to hear or see just from a growth perspective, because that's, I, I believe their best property. Um, and it's their, probably their fastest growing property still. So th that's something that I'm watching out for any other, um, insights on consumer behavior, uh, any other insights on potential travel. Uh, Google is often a good read through read through for travel because, People use Google to look for flights, and people use Google to look for uh, travel details. So anything like that that could give us any input on the consumer would be great. Uh, moving along is Microsoft. Microsoft's really a barometer for the business, uh, uh, large-scale businesses. Uh, they report earnings on the 27th, which is tomorrow, like Apple and like Google, and they are expected to bring in $1.92, and then they're expected to bring in $44.3 billion. Now, Microsoft also, like I like the others, last week broke out to all-time highs. It's been in this uh, pretty slow and steady uptrend. The 20-day on Microsoft has been acting as support recently. Should it not say anything positive or should the stock break down? Uh, typically, Microsoft will sell off to the 50-day. Um, sometimes it'll sell off to the 100-day. From there, they usually find support pretty quickly. Uh, that's been the case since it broke out to all-time highs um, back in 2021, early 2021. So Microsoft will give us a nice little barometer on uh, the business side. It'll give us a barometer on large-scale businesses, and um, it's really poised to continue to grow. This is one that I'm not really familiar with outside of just generalities. It's not one that I own. I traded it last week, but I don't own any, so I'm purely just watching from a market sentiment perspective. So it's important to know, like I said on the front end, that this is not just a big tech earnings week. So there are a host of names reporting earnings uh, this week. And I'm gonna just kind of gloss over some of the ones that I'm watching for outside of big tech this week in the next couple of slides. So the first one I'm watching out for is Starbucks. Last week we saw Chipotle and we saw uh, Domino's really crush it. I'm mostly interested to see, let me just pull up Starbucks real quick so I can uh, kind of talk through it. I, I'm mostly, so if you saw, as we saw last week on Starbucks, uh, on the back of this Domino's and on the back of uh, Chipotle, it really broke out. And you can see it here. I just really went parabolic. I want to see if, if what we saw out of Domino's or what we saw out of Chipotle last week were operational or if it was like just a broad thing across all fast casual so i think it'll be really important to see if starbucks can reiterate some of the things that um domino's and chipotle saw if their technology is bringing consumers into the stores more if people are going back to the stores more because typically people would go 
to the stores um, on their way to work or on their lunch break because they're back to work. So there's some things there that that are unique to Starbucks and not in line with uh, Chipotle and Domino's. But by and large, I want to see if you know Chipotle and Domino's were able to crush it because of an operational thing or if there's just a broad demand from the consumer. The other thing that Starbucks is going to give us is a little barometer on inflation and it's going to give us a little barometer on China. So I want to see these things uh, tomorrow on the 27th after market close is when Starbucks reports. They are expected to bring in 77 cents a share and they're expected to bring in 7.26 billion on a revenue basis. McDonald's is another one. Uh, again, same concept. Are they crushing it as well? Is there any signs of inflation? Is the consumer on on is that demographic of a consumer uh, st still going into the stores? Is technology helping them? Is their app helping them, et cetera, et cetera? They report on the twenty eighth, which is Wednesday, and they report before the market opens. They're uh, uh, expected to bring in two twelve a share and bring in five point five seven billion. Caterpillar is uh, one that's going to book end the week. They are expected to announce on the 30th. Uh, their expectation is for 241 a share, and uh, the revenue consensus is 12.53 billion. So, Caterpillar is interesting and it's unique because there is a synchronized global recovery that's always been the theme here for uh, the better part of 2021 and uh, the second half of 2020. So, you know, with with things being the way they are from a reopen perspective and with the Delta variant and with um, some places locking down and the United States not locking down, Caterpillar is going to give us a little bit of a read through here. I think uh, they can tell us about what they're seeing from a demand side from, you know, international development. And if this synchronized global recovery that we're seeing is still in play or if it's fractured and if it's fractured, where is it fractured? If they can give us any input as to why, that'd be great. And then um, if there's any telltale signs of inflation that they're seeing, that's usually another thing that would be a really good uh, barometer for us and another, another good gauge for us moving forward. So they're expected, like I said, to announce on the 30th. They're expected to bring in 241 a share or $12.53 billion on a revenue basis. Boeing's another one. So I'm going to go back to the technicals first on Boeing. Uh, Boeing recently broke its uptrend from COVID. So it had this uptrend from COVID. It recently broke it. It also plunged through its 200 day. So I want like th this one is one that I want to pay attention to because they've just not been able to operate. Ever since they had, you know, the 737 MAX issues, they've not been able to operate. So I want to just pay attention and see whether or not there's any input there. I also want to see if they have any any info from the airline operators. So if there's any demand there from the, uh, from the airlines for their new planes or if there's still a little bit of pushback. So to me, this one is one of the most important companies um, announcing that it's not a tech company because they've not been able to operate. They're a nice tell to the travel sector. They can give us a read through for the airlines. Um, they can tell us about some, some of the demand there. And then ultimately they're a really large component in the Dow. So, um, from a, from a employment perspective, b because of Boeing, there are tons of people are relying on Boeing for work in this in this country uh be, just from a, a parts perspective from a derivative perspective from an airline perspective from a fuel perspective etc cetera, etc cetera. so this is a a large bellwether that i really want to pay attention to and i want to see and i want to hear whether or not they're they ha they're seeing anything different or if they're seeing you know any sort of headwinds that that we may or may not be preparing for um outside of that like i said they have had a hard time operating so i want to see if there's any sort of uh operational um efficiency that's showing up now moving forward and then on a technical perspective they broke through their 200 they're pressing back up against that uptrend and if it fails there if it fails there excuse me uh that doesn't bode well for the stock and it bodes well for further downside so they report on the 28th before the market opens 
uh, they're they're expected to lose again lose 71 cents a share and then they're expected to have uh, 17.04 billion in revenues UPS announces tomorrow before the market opens uh, UPS is a really good barometer for the consumer UPS, UPS really crushed it last quarter and then their stock took off on the back of that um, they are a great barometer not just for the consumer but e-commerce in general and for business in general so anything that they say that is positive on that front could be a positive tailwind for you know the consumer related names and for the uh, the consumer economy in general they're expected oh i have the wrong data there excuse me let me just pull it up for a second um they're expected to um bring in a uh 281 in uh 281 a share and they're expected to bring in 23.17 billion uh, forgive me this is a, a little f up i duplicated the last slide so i messed up here uh, but anyways like i said they're they're expected to bring in 281 a share and they're expected to bring in 23.7 billion um, amd is the last one that i'm going to cover here it's also a huge uh tell for the uh uh the chip shortage so I really want to pay attention to see if there's any sort of developments there it's also a tell for crypto AMD their products are used to mine crypto in general and to, and to keep that network afloat so I really really want to pay attention to some of the things that they say in the, on, on their uh, quarter I also want to see if they have any input on supply chain issues because uh, chips in general are the lifeblood of the economy so it, it's it's a really important quarter that I want to pay attention to. It's uh, something that I'm watching for specifically. And then outside of that, I want to see how certain uh, companies behave on the back of that. So last week we had Intel. They've been a really shit operator as well, like, like Boeing. So it's important to see whether or not these really bad operators, in this case Intel, are continuing to underperform specific specifically or if there is a broad-based um, situation going on for these names so they're expected to bring in 54 cents a share uh, they're also expected to bring in 3.61 billion in revenue on a technical perspective let's just pull this up uh, AMD has been consolidating between this 73 level and then on the upper side call it 98 a share so if we start to see any sort of uh, positive messaging or any sort of positive tailwinds for the stock this should be at an all-time high in no time if not I want to see if these moving averages and this retest of the downtrend downtrend breakout holds um, by and large this is a tell for the overall S SMH um, or the socks so it's basically at all-time highs. Let's just do this. It's basically at all-time highs. Um, you know, again, any sort of positivity out of AMD, any sort of operational execution out of AMD should push it to all-time highs. And then I'm just going to pay attention to whether or not... Just delete this. Uh, slide this over, actually. I'm just going to pay attention to whether or not this causes a, uh, a tailwind for the rest of the space or if it just gets... gets uh, uh, absorbed as uh, AMD specific. Now, the, the the main competitor that I want to pay attention to uh, for AMD is NVIDIA. So NVIDIA recently split. Um, it's got its 50 days support and then its all-time high, you know, post split now is basically 209, call it. So it'll be interesting to see if AMD can execute, if investors view AMD as a, a, a telltale sign for the rest of the space, or if they use it, if they view it as AMD specific, um, and whether or not they continue to buy it. Now, I said this on the front end. These are the historical outcomes for the for the weeks that the Big Five and in this case Big Six have um, announced earnings. So, on the week of January 26, 2015, we were down 3.58%. Uh, Jan 29, 2018, we're down 3.93%. Uh, April 27, 2020, 4.51%. 
and then October 26, 2020, down 6.71%. So three months ago, which was the week ending April 30th, we we had these companies announced at the same time as well, and they they ultimately gave us nothing, right? So they gave us a, a flat market. The result was up 0.02%, which is essentially nothing. So uh, these companies, just to show you a little perspective here, they account for more than $10 trillion worth of market cap and approximately 25% of the S&P 500. So this is a, a visual representation. I've broken it out for you um, based on uh, market cap. This is this data was from the pre-market, so this is probably adjusted at this point. Um, but it essentially just shows you how large these companies are and how much weight they account for in the market. So with all that being said, um, I want to say thanks for checking me out. Thanks for watching this. Thanks for uh, uh, subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please click the like and subscribe button below. If you have any input, please leave it in the comment section below or reach out to me at every time I cash on all social media platforms. If you have any specifics that you want covered, please leave a comment below or reach out to me at every time I cash um, on all social media platforms or every time I cash.com slash contact. Uh, as always, I want to say thank you again. I want to say thanks for your time. Thanks for checking me out. And as always, stay safe, stay profitable, and stay locked in.